Throughout Stalin's time in power, he would execute and slaughter millions of his own people. The word purge is synonymous with his time in control, and it was his secret police, the NKVD, who would carry out these orders. Anyone who was suspected of political dissent and opposition would not be safe, and everyone feared the knock at the door in the middle of the night. Even senior people in government were not safe, and Stalin would purge anyone who had the slightest amount of animosity towards him. One man who led the NKVD was Lavrenti Beria, who is considered today a man who was one of the Soviet Union's greatest criminals and executioners. He was a man who oversaw the Gulag system and expanded it on a huge scale. But following the death of Stalin, Beria would be turned upon, and he was a man who wanted to get to the very top but he would be executed also like the thousands who went before. Join us today as we look at the brutal execution of Lavrenti Beria, Stalin's chief of police. And remember as always to support our channel. Please make sure to subscribe. Lavrenti Beria was born on the 29th of March 1899 and his mother was incredibly religious. His father was a landowner and he attended a technical school in Sukhumi. And in March 1917, whilst he was a student, he joined the Bolsheviks. He was skilled at school in maths and science, but he then continued his work inside of political spheres. He had previously worked for anti-Bolsheviks in Baku, and then following the Red Army capture of the city in April 1920, he was threatened with execution. He was actually saved from this, as there was no time to arrange his shooting. But he began at the age of 20 his career in state security in Azerbaijan, and in 1920 he joined the Cheka, the Bolshevik secret police. The Red Army at this time invaded Georgia, and the Cheka were involved in this, and Beria was involved in leading the repression of a Georgian nationalist uprising in 1924, where it was believed that around 10,000 people were executed. He then gained further promotions in state security, and he then became an ally of Stalin, and would then help to elevate him to the position of the head of the Soviet state. Beria was in charge of the Georgian OGPU, and he destroyed many different intelligence networks, they were using agents to spy on the Soviets. He was an effective leader inside the Secret Service, and he then became the first secretary of the Communist Party of Georgia, and the party leader for the whole region. He then shifted to becoming a member of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union in 1934, and he turned on other members of the Georgian Communist Party, and ordered many executions to make sure he had complete control and power. But he had become one of the most trusted advisers of Stalin, and Berry was in charge of many of the purges in the lands which he oversaw. He remained loyal too to Stalin, and in a speech he said, Let our enemies know that anyone who attempts to raise a hand against the will of our people, against the will of the party of Lenin and Stalin, will be mercilessly crushed and destroyed. But then Stalin brought Berry to Moscow, and he became the deputy head of the NKVD, and the secret forces, which oversaw state security and police. He was working to begin with alongside Nikolai Yetsov, and they carried out the Great Purge, which resulted in over a million people being executed or being sent to concentration camps and sites known as gulags. The oppression across the state was huge, and they were known as enemies of the people. Beria then gained promotion further, and then Yetsov, his boss, was purged and executed in 1940. Lavrenti Beria took his position and became the head of the NKVD. He was closely linked to the Great Purge, but as the head of the Secret Service, he did to begin with ease up on the repression. But at this time the Second World War was on, and executions and arrests did continue, and Beria also oversaw mass deportations of those during the war from Soviet-occupied countries such as Poland. He was becoming one of the most senior figures in the Soviet Union, and he was made a Commissar General of State Security. Beria would have some involvement in the war, as he would tell Stalin that Polish prisoners of war kept in camps and prisons in Belarus and Ukraine, were considered enemies, and for this they were recommended for execution. His NKVD also were the perpetrators of the Katyn massacre, in which they executed and shot dead a total of around 22,000 people in just a matter of days. He carried out a purge of the Red Army, which also damaged the Soviet war effort, and he mobilised millions of people imprisoned in gulag camps into wartime production. Berry was in charge of the armaments manufacture, including aircraft production, but as the war turned in favour of the Soviets, he was in charge of dealing with people who were considered collaborators or invaders. He then became the Marshal of the Soviet Union, 
and he wanted Stalin to ensure that occupied lands had a communist leader. But as Stalin was getting older and getting near 70, there was a power struggle at the top of the Soviet Union. In January 1946, Beria resigned as the head of the NKVD, but he had control of national security as a deputy prime minister. The new NKVD chief did not like him, and there were also a number who hated him and rivalled him. There were many who would dig their claws in, and it was clear that Beria was a favourite to later succeed Stalin, but there were many men who fought for power at this time. But then the time of Stalin's death came. Beria was one of the first to see Stalin when he was found unconscious, and he needed medical attention, but Beria dismissed things as he was worried that Stalin would wake up would be furious that people were seeing him in weak moments. Stalin remained paralysed and incontinent for 12 hours and was not able to speak. But Beria decided against calling a doctor immediately and he remained by his side. Following the death of Stalin on the 6th of March 1953, he decided to go on the offensive to claim the top position. He was the first one to kiss Stalin's body and he stood over the body allegedly radiating as others sobbed. Many believed he was off to take power and he was appointed the first deputy premier. His close ally, Malenkov, became the new premier, but Nikita Khrushchev would oppose this alliance, and he was not, to begin with, able to challenge them. But the time came when an uprising broke out in East Berlin, and many after this believed Beria was too dangerous, and his policies would damage the Soviet Union. But on the 26th of June 1964, Lavrenti Beria was arrested near to Moscow. His downfall came incredibly swiftly and quickly, as Khrushchev launched an ambush, and he launched an attack on him saying he was a spy for the British and also a traitor. Beria was completely shocked, but he had a feeling that this was coming, and he knew what was happening. He was taken after Malenkov, his old friend, pressed a button under his desk, and then armed officers swooped in and arrested him. Beria's men were guarding him in the Kremlin, and he was held in a special cell until that evening, and was then smuggled in the boot of a car. He was taken to the Moscow guardhouse, and then a bunker of the Moscow military district's headquarters building. Many of his closest allies were also arrested, and Beria and his men were brought on trial. He was found guilty of treason, and it was alleged he had secret connections with foreign intelligence services, and that he tried to talk peace with Hitler in 1941. Lavrenti was also accused of terrorism, as he took part in the Red Army Purge of 1941, and also counter-revolutionary activity during the Russian Civil War. Lavrenti Beria was sentenced to death on the day of the trial, and the other six men who were tried with him were shot immediately after it ended. He was executed separately, and was dragged from the courtroom kicking and screaming. He knew that he was about to be killed, and he was surrounded by Soviet officials. He was on his knees, and he collapsed in tears and begged for mercy, and for his life to be spared. Then Pavel Batitsky came up with his pistol and shot Beria straight through the head. He was the one who had been selected to perform the execution, and after this he was cremated. Lavrenti Beria was a brutal and barbaric head of Stalin's NKVD, who met his end begging for his life. He was a man who carried out the brutal will of Stalin, and he was responsible for the executions and killings of hundreds of thousands of people, and many more were sent to the gulags. After his death many brutal stories came out about him, including the fact he may have been a serial killer who had abducted girls off the streets and had murdered them. It's believed some of these were even buried in his wife's rose garden and that under his home in Moscow was a torture basement. He was a man who fought for power with others after Stalin's death, but he was a man who Stalin considered his Himmler and he was a terrible murderer who was responsible for the slaughter of millions. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.